It is Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well. A double tip of the cap to the state of Ohio on this good day. The Cincinnati Reds will have a day off before facing the Atlanta Braves over the weekend, have their first win streak of at least 11 games since 1957. Kudos to them and the team on the northern side of the state. My Cleveland Guardians, Bo Naylor finally got his first big league hit. His older brother, Josh, who turns 26 today, got four knocks and was there rooting him on right there on the rails. That was pretty cool to see last night, wasn't it? Josh Naylor's only 26 years old? I know. I wow. Know. I was shocked. Uh, no, yeah. that's amazing to see. I, 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 That would be something, like you asked me, like what I'd want to do on a baseball field, if I could just pick anything, it'd be like pr- play with my brother. Like that's amazing. Yep. So to see the emotion, you know, that that kind of struck uh, a chord with me for sure. Yeah, he had quite the offer to start his career between the call up at the end of last season and then hasn't gotten a knock since he got called recalled last weekend. Um, but good for them. And by the way, a third nailer is about to get drafted. I think he's a oh, top gosh. 50 prospect. Yeah, it's just it just doesn't stop with that family. So tip of the cap to all of them. All right, uh, we're going to start out west where the Dodgers had their second straight shutout win in Anaheim over the Angels. But I got to tell you, man, Shohei Otani did it again. Another 12 strikeout performance, one run in seven innings. This is just kind of in the fun stratosphere of asking questions because I know we're years from even discussing the possibility. But what do you think the Hall of Fame standard for one Shohei Otani will be when it's time? You're asking like what he needs to do to get into the Hall of Fame as far as like concrete numbers. I think that's what you're asking, right? I think so, but look how we have such a sliding scale at this point. I mean, first of all, when I posed this question recently, just on Twitter, some people said he is already in. Do you believe that? In my opinion, yes. I mean, how could you tell the story of baseball without talking about Shohei Otani and mentioning him with the greats and all the things he's done? So, you know, usually we have these concrete numbers, 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, whatever it is with pitchers. You know, I don't pay attention to that side. But with Shohei, it's a little bit different. Uh, he's come in and, and and done things that have never been done in this sport before. So I think in that regard, you know, especially because he's got an MVP in the bag, Again, he probably have another one in the bag this year. I mean, we're we're talking about a guy that's already one of the best players to ever live, if not the most. I mean, we talk about this all the time. He's the most talented player to ever live. Now, we can talk about statistics and counting stats and longevity because that is different and that is important. And that's one of the calling cards of the Hall of Fame is longevity of a career. Uh, So Shohei's not there yet because he just – Hasn't played long enough. Like he will get there. I, I like everyone else. I'm curious how, how long can you be a starting pitcher and a hitter uh, of his caliber? I think I think longer than most people do, just because of the work that this guy puts in. As long as his body holds up, we're all good. Uh, so I guess, in my opinion, Chris, I, I think he's already there because that's how I want my Hall of Fame to be. Um. So I don't have the concrete numbers because he's he's just different. Like there is like mm-hmm. he doesn't have to hit 500 home runs. He doesn't have to get 300 wins or 3,000 strikeouts or anything like that. He's just a different player. So we have to we have to put all those aside and just kind of look at the whole picture. I, I think he's again in my opinion. I think he's already in. Right. So after this year, assuming he stays healthy, the back half of this season, I think we all feel like he's going to run away it might even be unanimous for the mvp if so that would be his second in three years plus a runner-up so it probably is just a question of this is weird but just saying that he stays healthy because even if he has some down downish years for shohei meaning 26 home runs an era of 401 but still making every start he's going to compile some numbers so as long mm. as he can still stay in the rotation for the next several years, he's going to get over a thousand career strikeouts. As long as he can still swing the bat, he's likely going to get over three hundred homers. He's already halfway there. He's I think at one fifty one. But yeah, it's not the numbers with him. It just isn't. And I think it's almost like I look at some guys and I say, "Were you dominant for a seven or eight year stretch as a hitter or a pitcher?" 
And if you compiled enough numbers, it doesn't have to be plus 250 wins or 3,000 strikeouts for a starter, but it has to be probably close to 200 wins, had some you know major moments or awards or things of that nature. For me, I think if you combine the two, which means he was a top-notch pitcher for like three or four years and a top-notch hitter for at least three or four years, and you combine those, and you get about eight great years of elite play between the two, to me, that's good enough, I think. Yeah, and modern day baseball doesn't lend itself necessarily to longevity so, and and right. innings and these counting stats. It's it's the game has changed in that regard. So I think we need to refocus and reframe the discussion over the Hall of Fame because of that. And Shohei's on his own. That's a different discussion, but because of the way you know we have platoons and we have pitch counts now, and guys aren't throwing. 300 innings in a season i mean it's it's just different so we have to take that into to account as well going forward with other players not just shohei uh the great sarah langs had another tweet i always love just covering her on on twitter and seeing what she has to say she said he now has 15 games with at least 10 strikeouts since the start of last season four more than anyone else in the sport in that span oh by the way he has also hit 58 homers over that time <laughs> It's nuts. It's just, he's doing this year is crazy. I, I'm going to say it every time we talk about him. If you don't make a special occasion to watch him pitch and hit at least four times a week, you're shortchanging yourself as a baseball fan. You got to figure out a way to do it because this is not going to happen again. It's just not. People could say, oh, he's going to, we're going to have all these little Shohei Otanis running. Nope. Nope. Go talk to the guys that do this for a living. They've said, if you think it's coming around again, you're mistaken. So enjoy it while we got it. And that's why it's awesome. You know what else is awesome? The run the San Francisco Giants have been on. They have now ripped off 10 straight as they took care of the San Diego Padres. But again, a reversal and a play at the plate took center stage. One nothing game in the fifth. Tatis nailed Sable for the third out. We thought clearly out. Gary Sanchez there. We had the tag. We then had a challenge. Replay in New York said Sanchez did not give the runner a lane. San Francisco ended up tacking on a couple more runs. Bob Melvin comes out to argue. He ended up getting tossed. Manny Machado, your thoughts? I mean, when you get thrown out by 20 feet, I don't know how you overturn that. So um, I just think it's a ridiculous rule. You don't, you don't, you're going to call something like that. And then you know, it's, not a, it's not a for sure thing. You know, there's, they're saying that he was, his foot was on. He's blocking his foot was inside the box. He has to be in line, but at the end of the day, he gets thrown out by 20 feet, 10 feet, whatever it is. Like he had no name even sliding. There was there was no play there, so I don't know how the play gets overturned. All right, because this has now happened on consecutive nights, are we just being overly sensitive to it, or is there a major problem with what's going on at the plate? I don't know if there's a major problem. I have more issue with the Jonah Heim uh, reversal from last night than I do with this one. And I and I actually I can see this one also from both sides. He was thrown out by 10 feet. Uh Tatis threw a laser right in there. Um, but like by letter of the law and by the rule, Sanchez was set up in foul territory and there was no lane. And and he did have to alter his running path to try to create a lane. We're trying to make sure that we don't hurt catchers. You can't touch catchers anymore. And I think that's a good rule. Uh, with that comes plays like this. Because in the old days, if Sanchez was up the line like that, you know what would have happened. Someone would have put a shoulder down and went right into him. So we're like avoiding that. So like, you know, I get what the Padres are saying. On their side, hey, man, we made a great baseball play. We threw the runner out. And because of, not a technicality, but because of this rule, now we... You know, give up a run there, and does it alter the game? Probably, or sure, whatever. Um, I thought it was great for the Giants to challenge it. They knew the rule right away. Kapler, after the game, said that we saw it on video. His foot was in the – his left foot was in foul territory, and that's against the rules. And they even asked him, like, do you think this um, is the spirit of the rule to have stuff like this happen? He said very smartly, I don't care about that. I just – I'm not – I don't make the rules. I, I'm here just to find ways to win within the construct mm. of the rules. I, I, I wish I would have heard the truth because at that point he's already won the challenge. So <laughs> I think we seriously, you think, if, you think if it was reversed, you think if it was reversed, he would have said something different. Probably, but I don't have Probably. a problem with that. Like I understand, but I would like people to start. The only way we're ever going to make progress in society if, is if we start making 
points, you know, and start discussing it. Now, I actually think, I think this one was the right reversal. Like Sanchez should have should have put himself more in fair territory. And then if the throw took him into the lane, then I think he would have had an argument. But he was already planning there. So I do think we're being a little overly sensitive. I, I still don't understand the Jonah Heim one. That that one will boggle my mind from here until mm-hmm. maybe we change the rule. Is Here's it the same the thing with I've the Jonah Heim one now that I think about it, though? Was he was his foot just in foul territory because he's behind the no, plate? Is he, that it? He was standing. I think he had a foot on the plate, on the back edge of the oh, plate. They, they but, always have the foot on the plate, though. I, um, that one well, still but that's is crazy. part of the said. rule. So like Jason Benetti, uh, who does an amazing job calling games for the White Sox and for Fox, I think he put it on his Twitter account. He talked to somebody in the league office, and he came out with like five or six points that they told him. Once again, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's getting in front of a camera answering questions. They're just like, they're answering the phone for anybody that'll call that calls games, I guess, for a living. And so the rest of us fans just have to dig in order to find out the correct information. I think what they said about Heim was that his foot was on the back end of the plate. If I read it right, that's what I think I heard still, which is ridiculous. Here's my point. If the whole idea is to protect players, do you know what is a very dangerous play that I see all the time? Shortstop or second baseman on a throw to second on an attempted steal, dropping a knee in front of the base. Is that not dangerous? You tell me. Uh, It is very dangerous. And you know the guys that slide head first, and those guys you're, you know, you decide to put your knee down a lot more than the guys that come in feet first. Okay. So you're not giving a guy a path to get to second base either, right? Nope. You don't have to. If you have the ball at second base, you're right. You don't have to give him anything. You can block the base entirely. So what what are we doing here? It's like I understand home is home, you know, right? It's the George Carlin line. It's like home. We're coming home. And uh I get it. That's where we get the run scored, put on the board. But, man, if it's all about protecting the health of players, then do it at other bases. And if it's not about protecting the health of other players, then let's remove the rule or let's get some feel. I don't know. But there is an issue with it. But I do think they got it right last night. I think we yes. both agree last night they did get it right. And and Sanchez, you know, he could have. He was trying to just get himself like the nice long hop. So that's yes. why he's set up that way. But, like, I don't know. As a catcher, you kind of have to know what's going on. But it does seem like it depends it's on the umpire lot. crew. It, it's easy for us at home to sit there and say, hey, Gary, why don't you just move, you know, put both feet in fair territory, and then if the throw takes you. Like, that, I just said that two minutes ago. But at the same time, I think when it's happening like this, it's really, really challenging. And we're asking a lot of our catchers, and I just – Maybe in the offseason they'll give another look, but I don't know. All right, I, also I want, want to tell you a little one bit. Second. Of... One, one oh, second. One second. Yeah. Bowmel gets tossed from the dugout. He got tossed. He couldn't even say anything from the dugout. I thought that was also like pretty brutal. He was he was he arguing the play? I guess, but he's in the dugout. Yeah, he was. If you come I know, out, but he was arguing I get it. the play. That's so the rule that's is so the minute, soft. I think the rule is the minute you start arguing the play, it doesn't matter whether you're in the dugout next to the umpire or sitting in row F. I'm, I'm just telling you. That's all. Now I want to tell you about bird dogs. They're making me look good this summer. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. know, well, look, look at Plu. Look at Plu. Huh? Shake that thing. Shake that for us. They got their stretch khaki shorts designed for a slimmer fit through the thigh and the leg, giving you that truly sculpted look. You just saw it right there from Trevor Plu. Bird dog shorts fit way better than regular shorts that are made of that stiff, restrictive cotton. Stuff's horrible. Well, they fixed this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric. Looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. It is big time, people. And here's something great for you. You know how it's now officially summer. That means it gets hot. It gets sweaty. You get sticky depending on where you live in the country. Bird dogs also uses the anti-stink sweat. Wicking fabric keeps you cool and dry all day long south of the equator. That is so, so important. So I want you to head on over to birddogs.com slash today. In addition to getting these great shorts, you also get a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. So that is birddogs.com slash today, a free Yeti-style tumbler. You'll be feeling great. You'll be sipping it. You'll be enjoying your summer because it is officially here.
Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh, God, I'm so sorry about this. They've now dropped nine straight. They have tumbled to fourth place in the National League Central. Is it over for one of the early success stories of this season? Oh, boy. Um, Is it over for the Pirates? I, I think that it might be. Chris Rose, uh, it's it hasn't been a, a a nice stretch, obviously here, but since uh, I don't know, since May started, it hasn't been a nice stretch. They went eight and eighteen in May, six and twelve in June. So I think the beginning of the end had started prior to this as well. And right now they're dealing with a bullpen that's giving up runs, walking a lot of people. They're dealing with an offense that hasn't really clicked and. Uh, key Brian Hayes even had some choice words for the offense. They were not just passing the baton. We're not taking the walks. We're not doing things that good offenses do. They're getting some starts here and there. They have some good bullpen guys. Can they go on a run and do that again? Like, I want to give them a maybe, but it seems to me like to answer your question, I think this is this is probably it. I, I don't see them winning the NL Central, and I don't see them in a playoff spot towards the end of the year. It was nice to see some guys. I would love to see O'Neill Cruz come back and do some things at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I think they have a good base of players uh, that they can build upon. And we're going to be seeing these pirates in years to come. Uh, I think we got a little excited as they went on that run uh, at the beginning of the year. But as of, you know, over the last two months, it's kind of just been not more of what we expected, but more at that level that I think that they're at right now as an organization. I hate to say this, and I I regret even asking the question because we try to be a little positive, but when there's stuff like this, we have to talk about it, right? Because they were kind of the talk of baseball the first five weeks or so. We were like, oh, in this division, maybe. There's a maybe, and now there's a no. There's a definite no. Um, their pitching has not been good. Their hitting has not been good. They've been giving up runs left and right. It is a tough, tough watch right now. So for me... Unfortunately, and I hate to tell you this, Pirates fans, but it's nothing you're going to be shocked about. It's what can we get for certain guys, right? Ooh. Does anybody want a Carlos Santana again for down the stretch? To me, the big one is David Bednar. Pittsburgh kid hasn't even reached salary arbitration. That'll happen after this year. But with so many teams needing relief pitching, you might be able to get a huge haul, a huge one. And there is nothing worse than having a really really good closer on a team that ain't going anywhere it's just useless and so that's the thing i'll be watching over the next month are they going to be willing to give him up right what's uh God, he's got so many years of control and they want I know to he compete does. in the upcoming I years i know what you're talking about too because that position is very fickle and very few guys have extended runs at that i'm not saying david bednar can't do that but i i know what you're saying as far as maximize at the top of someone's value i mean he's pretty freaking valuable right now and he would be to a lot of teams like you said so it's interesting they're going to be looking to move some guys i don't know if bednar is going to be one of them uh but they'll be, be listening they'll be listening i mean you don't think a team like arizona which really needs massive help at the back end of that bullpen I mean, I know Mantiply has kind of worked his way back to what he was, all-star form. Chapin's been great. I'm not sure I trust Castro in that role. So that would be a yeah. great place for him. I think There's Texas a lot of would be a phenomenal place for him. So I, I think it would be a really good match for the Pirates. And I know you're sitting there, Buccos fans, saying, like, enough with the young players. You know, we've got to prove an all-star. Why don't we just keep him? You can. And you might win 77 games. Is that what you want? Yay, David Bednar made the all-star team again, and we won 77 games. Or do you want some tent poles you could build around? And by the way, speaking of suffering losses, the Pirates released their City Connect jerseys. What's going on? What is well, this? you don't like those? No. Tell me why you don't like those, because I'm, I'm into well, it. First of all, the hat is – I mean, didn't they already have that in the storage closet? <laughs> no that's true that's for, a, for those I, of you that are audio only it's a big p a big g and a big h it looks like like some softball team that's sponsored by p 
Pittsburgh gas and housing. No. I didn't really go into like the meaning behind everything. I think they have to keep like the colors. Like that's very much a Pittsburgh thing, right? You have to keep those colors. So they couldn't go off and do something, you know, old school, different colors. Cause this is just what Pittsburgh is. Um, I don't mind them. I think I'm like, I think I just like the black pants aspect of all these city connect uniforms. If you yes. give me different color pants, I'm into it. And I've always liked Pittsburgh's uniforms. Like they've been at the, top of my list maybe like the top three mm-hmm. of my list in baseball just they're clean they're classic i like them so like this is like along those lines so i i don't mind these jerseys but i get what you're no. saying like you could have maybe done something a little bit different but yeah uh, the the black pants they remind me in the 1979 world championship team i felt like in every one of those seven games in which they played baltimore they had a different uniform combo like they go all white with the stove tops they go all black. They'd go yellow, and then they'd go black. I mean, it was awesome, really good. That they'd they'd have the black and then the yellow pants. So all that's, but overall, I've been very disappointed by the city connects this year. I think the reds, the more I looked at them, I thought those were kind of crisp. Maybe, maybe the Mariners were kind of close. Maybe I wanted a different pants combination with them, but like Texas, I don't get. Baltimore to me was iffy. Um, I don't know. Listen, marketing people. I think we have a better, I think we have a great opportunity here. And I think we've whipped on some of them. Ugh. All right, let's move on. 20 years ago this past week, little kid named Miguel Cabrera made it to the big leagues as a 20 year old. 3,000 hits, 500 homers later. We'll see in Cooperstown in five years after this season. Which player that just started in the last, let's say, five or six years, do you think has the best shot at being around for a 20-season career? I went around the league, and you just put the five or six-year uh, thing on it. Um, that, there's a bunch of players that you could probably talk about. I'm going to give one that's a little bit older, if that's okay. And I think you're going to like sure, it. Sure, okay. Okay. I think it's going to be Jose Ramirez. He's already 11 years in. You know, he started in 2013. But like I just I just see this guy playing until he's 40 years old. Now I know some of this stuff won't translate that long. Like he's still stealing bags right now. He's only 30 years old. Uh he's not he's not gonna be stealing bags that age, but like I think this guy's just gonna be up there and and raking for the next 10 years. Uh that's the one that came to mind right away. When I'm thinking about Miggy and I'm thinking about you know longevity and what he was able to do and on the baseball field, I Jose Ramirez just came to mind. You know, whether he has to move off a of third base and I don't know where he's going to play. Maybe he goes to first base, a little short for first base. Maybe he nah, just becomes a full-time DH. Uh, I just see him playing, like him being that type of Miggy figure, uh, you know, around the league in 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 like, you know, eight, nine, ten years. I think he's still going to be doing it. I think he's going to be productive uh, for the next seven or eight years as well with the bat. So I, that one came to mind right away. And then I kind of just stuck with that. I know you wanted probably a little bit of a younger guy, but to me, it's Jose. It's okay. No, no, that's a good one. That's kind of a mid, as long as it's not somebody who's in year 16 and you think he's going to squeeze out another four. That's what I was looking for. Um, So definitely accepted. Good work. Okay. I'm going with Ronald Acuna. Okay. This yeah. is year six for him. Just like Miguel Cabrera. He came up at age 20. He turned 25 at the beginning of this season. So if you look at some of his numbers, 135 homers, 138 steals, and of course, he missed a significant amount of time during their World Series run. He missed half the season. Now, here's some stuff. If you just want to float it out and, as we say in the business, or used to say, mark the tape, how many guys are in the 500 homer, 300 steals club? 500 homer, 300 steals. A-Rod, Barry Bonds. One more. Uh, Pretty obvious. Mig- Miggy. Miggy who? I don't know. What, what? Give me the obvious. What is it? Willie Mays. Willie Mays, okay. That's it? Okay. That's it? There's only two other guys you can add it if you make 400 homers and 300 steals. Andre Dawson. Carlos Beltran. Those are the we're talking about five guys, five guys walking the planet. Um, 
they're all Hall of Fame talents. There's a reason a few of the guys aren't in it, but as far as talent goes, and I think that I think he's going to get in at least one of those groups and maybe both of them by the time it's all said and done. Possible. He is an amazing talent. I remember when he first came up and occasionally we were talking about him watching a ball bang off the wall and not running, getting pulled from games and stuff like that. That don't happen anymore. Kid is just a stud. He plays. He plays great. He's a phenomenal watch. And he just turned 25. That's so crazy. it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it, it, if he wants to stick around and play that long, I mean, I don't know how many contracts he's going to end up signing. But the closer you get to some of those counting numbers, maybe you stick around. Yeah. We'll see. I think yep. guys get motivated by so that towards the end of the career. Like, hey, I, I'm – Could be. Throw me some change and let me go try to get these numbers. I, I've seen it, so it just depends on the guy. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, before we get out of here, there's a reason I'm wearing a Royals cap. It ain't because it's been pretty on the field this year. For our guy, Vinny Pasquantino. Had a torn labrum in his shoulder. Our dude from the Rose Rotation just had surgery. You saw the photo he put out. He's he's wearing the specs. Um, have you had have you had major surgery before? I got a plate and screws put into my forearm, and I it was tough. Yeah. So right when you wake up from surgery, it's uh it's quite a trip. Hopefully you haven't had surgery out there. But I'm a two-time back surgery participant, and who knows, maybe a third coming my way. Woo-hoo. Um, when you wake up, it's it's a different world, so you don't know what you're doing. I did text if, him just to say, hey, you're okay. You look good here. Shout out Vinny P. I think he's watching Love Island. That's what his thing is yes. now. He says he hates it, but he also loves it at the same time. That's a lot of TV shows, bro. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. If you go back on Olivia, I guess you can't because her page is private. Maybe I'll get this video. She has a video of me coming out of surgery where I'm trying to move my my arm, but they have, it's there's an arm block, so I can't do anything. I'm just like, it's pretty funny. I'll, I'll send the video to Dan. Please do. Yeah, I had one for my last surgery. It wasn't it wasn't pretty. Hey, quick reminder that today's episode of Baseball Today was sponsored by these guys at Shady Rays. I want you to take on the sun with gear that is built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. In fact, Shady Rays offers a world-class product just as good as any expensive pair ever worn. Durable frames, clear optics, and that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. Every pair of shades backed by lost or broken replacements. So what does that mean? If you lose or break a pair, even on day one of ownership, no questions asked. They'll send you a brand new pair. Why? Shady Rays loves you. They want you to have the confidence to enjoy your summer while blocking out the sun. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head on over to ShadyRays.com. Use the code word today for 50% off two plus pair of polarized sunglasses. Shady Rays, your way to go. Speaking of go, we got to get going. But we're back at it again on Friday. For those of you that join us live every day on AMP, probably looking at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, we'll shoot that out on social media. For our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rohr, the always entertaining and studly Trevor Plouffe, I am Chris Rose. We will see you Friday on Baseball Today.